Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. This is my Redmi Note 10 5G review. Now, I've been very fortunate this year to test lots of Xiaomi phones and the Poco models as well. But my God, do they make it confusing? Take this example for one, the Poco M3 Pro. The Redmi Note 10 5G. The backs look different, don't they? Totally different. And that's it, that's all that separates them. Everything else inside is exactly the same. Same hardware, same screen, everything. It's just, that is a rebranded version of the Redmi Note 10 5G or the other way around. So if someone's deciding between these two phones, they're just gonna decide basically on look, really the look and the difference of the back of the phones and maybe the slight tweaks that they do on MIUI on, on the Poco editions. So it's like Xiaomi are creating a phone to compete against each other for their own benefit, which it will benefit them both anyway. I don't know, it's confusing. Anyway, I'm going slightly off tangent here. This is the Redmi Note 10 5G review. It is a decent phone. It's powered by the Dimensity 700 5G chip. I have the base model here, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigabytes of storage, which costs 199 pounds. We have a 6.5 inch LCD display with 2400 by 1080p resolution and a 90 Hertz refresh rate, which is adaptive as well. So a base model of 199 pounds, you know, affordable 5G phone with 90 Hertz adaptive sync display. It's not bad. So the display is good at this price point, but in sunlight mode, you do realize you're using an LCD display because when that screen goes brighter, the display looks washed out and white. When you compare it to an, an AMOLED on the Redmi Note 10 Pro, it looks much better. Now the back is made of plastic. Uh, this is for me the best thing about this phone. I absolutely love the look of that matte finish. It is beautiful and that cute little camera bump tucked away in the top corner as well. Uh, yeah, best thing about the phone for me, the back. And a big bonus for some people, there is a 3.5 mil socket there for your headphones and earphones. So for a smartphone at 199 pounds, you wouldn't expect decent sounding speakers, but this has one speaker at the bottom and you do get some decent sounding audio from this. The only disappointment is that there's no stereo. Okay, so the fingerprint sensor is integrated into the power button on the side of the frame, which I love personally, the best place for it. Um, it's not the fastest fingerprint sensor I've used, which is probably to be expected, but it is very accurate. So in terms of software, MIUI 12 on top of Android 11, um, there's the odd bit of bloatware in there with some sort of apps that in games that I'm never good, really gonna use. Um, I'm still on 12.0.3. Overall, the software experience has been good, but it's like a common trend now with all Xiaomi MIUI phones. The notifications either don't come through or they're really slow. In 12.5, I think they have improved slightly on the Redmi Note 10 Pro that I still use every now and again, uh, but still there's some sort of tweaks and stuff that need to be made. So this has a 5,000 milliamp battery and supports 18 watt fast charging. Battery on this is excellent. It really, really is. I've struggled to drain it through the whole day. Never had to charge this phone through the day at all. So I ran some games on it the other day, some COD, Last Shelter and Mortal Kombat um, for over an hour and I still had 11% left at midnight going to bed. And on that day, I achieved seven hours and 54 minutes screen on time. So yes, battery life is fantastic for me on this. And if 12.5, MIUI 12.5 is anything to go by, then once this has that, the battery life will improve even more because that's one thing I've noticed with the Redmi Note 10 Pro. MIUI 12.5 has made battery life even better. 
So while I was gaming with this phone, it handled Call of Duty and Mortal Kombat really well. Call of Duty was at its maximum settings that could be set on this phone, and that was medium graphics and high frame rate. So we're not getting ultra gaming performance, but it handled COD really well, and I never experienced any sort of lag or drop frames at all. I think the same goes for when I was uh, playing Mortal Kombat as well. So overall speed and performance uh, was okay, but obviously it's not as snappy as your Poco F3 and your Redmi Note 10 Pros, obviously, ob ob obviously. So this has a simple camera setup. Uh, it's got a main 48 megapixel sensor. We have a two megapixel macro and a two megapixel depth sensor. Now overall camera quality produced some decent photos and some uh, decent portrait mode too. Nothing spectacular. But if you have good light lighting, then you will achieve some really nice shots. So this is probably the best photo I captured on the phone. Uh, this, probably the worst. So on the front, we have an 8 megapixel sensor, uh, which is capable of some good quality photos with good bokeh again. Uh, the picture's quality declines in low light situations. So the video capabilities on the rear, we can shoot up to 1080p maximum with 30 frames per second. Uh, there is stabilization in there as well though. <laughs> 1080p 30, stabilization. Balancing call there. We've got an old, old sort of boat here, aren't we? Bit rusty. Daddy, I want to go see mummy. Yes, you're going to see mummy, yeah? Yeah. Okay. What do you think to the beach? Is it nice? As you can see, the quality comes out rather well. It was an absolutely sunny day that day, so obviously that's really going to help the, uh, the sensor. And stabilization, as you can see, was good as well. Now, if you switch to the front, exactly the same, 1080p, 30 frames per second with stabilization. And again, quality was decent on there as well. Now, one thing the phone doesn't have is an ultra-wide uh, sensor, which could put a few people off. So on the front-facing camera, 1080p, 30 frames per second, that's the maximum recording setting. We have stabilization on as well. So it's a little bit darker in here, obviously. It's a little bit soft. Color accuracy isn't bad. Look a little bit washed out. Right there, window. Now let's go and have a quick look outside and see what it looks like in really bright conditions. Whoops. Whoa. Wow, yeah, that's really bright. So that concludes my review, guys, of the Redmi Note 10 5G. Overall, a solid phone, a very affordable base model at 199 pounds, four gig and 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Excellent battery life, a gorgeous back, nice display, decent camera for the price and decent performance too. So chuck in the 5G, the NFC, the 3.5mm socket as well. It'll be a nice package for some people. So thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a thumbs up. And if you enjoy videos like this, unboxing, smart frame reviews, then please do hit that subscribe button. Until the next time, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.